Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into something related to distributed tracing. Now what is distributed tracing actually? So now consider in a distributed environment wherein you have multiple services satisfying a particular incoming request from a client. So you need to trace how this particular request is routed to various services, how much time each of the services takes and what's the total response for the client that it gets. Now lately, open telemetry has been emerged as a common standard which is vendor neutral for collecting metrics, logs and traces among the various applications that are running in a distributed environment. So today what we'll be doing is we'll be looking at how we can create a Spring Boot application which actually uses micrometer inside the actuator in order to send the distributed traces in the open telemetry format which will be read by a Jaeger backend. Now this Jaeger backend will actually get in this particular traces and using this we can then visualize this onto a UI dashboard through which we can see how much time each of the spans took and what was the entire distributed trace between the different services. So with this, let's get started. So let's go to start.spring.io and create a project for us. So what we are going to do is we are going to add in a few dependencies. So we're going to add Spring Web and we are going to add the actuator dependency. Now I'm going to give this a particular group name and I'm going to call this as service. We're going to use Java 17 and we are going to change this to Maven. And let's generate this particular project. Now I have already created the project and we have a sample service that is present here. Now if you see here, what do we have is, we have this particular project here in which we have a controller, we have this main application here and an OLTP configuration here. Now, before all of this, let's actually look at the various dependencies that we need. So now, when we actually added the actuator in the Spring Web, these were the two dependencies that were added, that the starter for the actuator uh, and the starter for the web dependency. Now, along with this, what we will have to add is, we will have to add these two dependencies. So first of all, this is the micrometer tracing bridge for open telemetry. Now, what exactly this will be doing is, so the micrometer which is present inside the actuator is responsible for collecting the traces and the metrics, right? So we will be using this particular dependency as a bridge which will actually help us to support the open telemetry standards. Using this dependency, we are using this particular bridge for open telemetry. And then after that, we will be using this particular dependency to actually send out the open telemetry format of the traces to an external backend. So now in this case, our external backend is going to be Jagger. And for this, we have this particular Docker Compose file. So for this, we have this particular Jagger Docker image that we'll be running using Docker Compose. And then we have to set this collector OTLP enabled. What does this do is basically, we are going to enable the open telemetry protocol collector enabled inside this particular image. Now, whatever traces that come in, this Jagger Docker image collector will actually support OTLP format. That is the open telemetry protocol format. So first of all, after this dependencies that we have just looked at here, let's go and look at what our application is doing right now. So this is simple, a main application here, which has a REST builder. So we need to provide a REST template using a builder. And in the controller, there is something special being done here. In a distributed application, so when you have a distributed architecture having multiple services, what do we have? You have many services that run in together in the same cluster or in the same VPC or in the same private network that you have, right? Rather than actually creating separate services, what am I doing here is I'm going to use this same application being run twice as two separate instances, one running on 8080 port and the other one running on 8090 port such that when I hit this path one using a curl command on port 8080, this one will actually internally call another service which will be running at 8090 and invoke this path two. So I'm just running the same instances, it's just going to be running on two separate ports and the first instance will actually call the second instance. Why we are doing this? So as to capture the various traces that happens right from we calling the first service 
then the first service calling the second service and the second service then returning the response to the first service and then finally back to the client. Now this is a simple setup that we'll be running. Now to make this thing work, what we have to do is provide this OTLP configuration. Now what does this OTLP configuration do is, we have this HTTP span exporter, which will actually export all our traces and span to a particular Jagger backend. Now we have to provide this particular URL to it. So this URL is going to be configured here. And then using this URL, it will actually send the traces and the spans to our Jagger backend. Now I have set this thing inside the properties file here, wherein I'm setting the URL for Jagger, which I will be running at port 4318 using the docker compose file here. So I have exported 4318 here and I'm exposing this particular port to access the particular Jagger UI itself. Now, if you go back to this property file, you see here I have set this management tracing sampling probability to 1.0. Why am I setting this is basically I want to capture all the traces with a probability of one that is basically all the traces that have been generated will be actually captured and sent to the Yaga backend. Along with this, I'm setting this particular logging pattern in order to display us the trace ID and the span ID from each of the services that we'll be running. Now with all of this being done, we can actually start our Yaga Docker Compose. So let's start with Docker Compose up. And with this, actually Yager is all available. Now we are going to actually open this here. So I have already opened this Yager backend here and I'm going to now refresh the UI. So I have no services right now because I have no services communicating with Yager right now. But what I'm going to do is after I have built this particular project, I'm going to actually copy the commands from here. So here, basically what I'm trying to do is I'm going to run this particular job, giving it a particular name as service one and running it at port 8080. Similarly, I'm doing the same stuff for, for service two, but in this case, I'm giving it a name service two and I'm running it at port 8090. So let's actually take this one first and run it. So the application has now started. Now this is actually service one, which is on the left. And now I'm going to run service two on the right. Perfect. So both the services are running. Now what we're going to do, we're going to make a simple curl request to this path one. So if I go back to this controller here, and I'm going to make a curl request to this one. So I'm going to run a curl request. And I'm going to say 8080 slash service slash path one. So now what it has done is it actually has got a response from path one, which also combines a response from path two. Now this path two is actually a response from a service running at port 8090. Let's look at our service logs. So if you see here, this was an incoming request that came in here and this was at path one. And then after that, you see here, the incoming request came to part two here, which responded back to path one. And then afterwards it responded back to the curl request. Now, if you look here closely, you can see this particular distributed trace ID. This is the same trace ID for this particular entire trace call um, in service one, as well as in service two here. So this both are the same trace IDs, but if you see, you have this new span IDs here. So this was a span for this particular service, and this was a span ID for this particular service. The next thing that we're going to look at is inside the Jagger UI. So I'm going to refresh this. And if you can see here, now you see these two services. You can ignore the Jagger query one because that belongs to the internal part of Jagger, which also monitors itself and you get this as a third service. So let's look at the service one and find all the traces. So if you see here, an incoming request was made at path one and then afterwards service one was calling service two and let's look at this particular trace. So if I open this particular trace, you can see here, this was the entire 450 milliseconds around and service one took around 400 and 12 milliseconds along with service two taking around 163 milliseconds. So if I expand this, you can see the particular span ID here. So this is the 414FA 
which was present here so this was a span id from here and then if you want to see the span id from here you can see it here so this was the span id for this particular entire service call so e2b is the span id from here now you can read all about this on my blog refactorfirst.com i'll add a link to that particular blog into the description below so we just saw how we can implement open telemetry format for distributed tracing into a Spring Boot application and then export these particular traces into a Jagger backend and visualize them on the Jagger UI. Now I have written all about this on my blog site refactorfirst.com. You can check out the link in the description below. And if you like this particular video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to this particular channel for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and see you in my next one.